بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم عارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو دا نیکسٹ سیشن آن دا سیریز آف ویڈیو لیکچر آن دا سبجیکٹ آف سسٹم پروگرامنگ ود لینکس دا ٹائٹل آف ٹوڈے سیشن از ڈیزائن اینڈ کوڈ آف یونکس ایل ایس یوٹیلیٹی ول وی ول اسٹارٹ ود سم بیسک ڈائریکٹری مینجمنٹ لائبریری کالس دین ویل سی وٹ ایل ایس ڈو اینڈ ہاؤ اٹ ڈو اٹ We will start designing some basic versions of the ls command and finally we will design a version that will do the long listing of the directory contents as well. I will leave some of the versions as assignment part and after going through this session uh, I am sure you will be able to uh, design and code the unix find and the grep utilities by yourself. Let us uh, discuss the cause related to directory management and I strongly recommend that you must go through the manual pages of these functions uh, but to save time I am using the slides which contains a brief summary of these calls. <clears throat> so let's start playing. Well MKDIR function creates a new empty directory with two entries dot and double dot in it and the permissions on the created directory are mod and not of umask and 0777. The second argument is the mod. Well, uh, the new directory will be owned by the effective user ID of the process. Similarly, this rmdir is used to delete an empty directory. And if the link out of the directory becomes zero and uh, no other process has the directory open, then the space occupied by the directory is freed. In case if one or more processes have the directory open when the link count reaches zero, then uh, the last link is removed. The dot and double dot entries are removed before the function returns. No new files can be created in this directory and the directory is finally freed when the last process closes it. Well this uh, open DIR and closed DIR function, open DIR is used to open a directory. You pass the directory path to it and it returns a, a directory stream pointer. And finally once you are done uh, reading a, a directory you call the closed DIR function on this directory stream. Well, uh, the directory stream pointer is passed to read DIR and the read DIR returns a direct structure pointer. You can see the man page for the detail and to see the different members of the direct structure, but two important which are available in most operating systems are D underscore write note number and D underscore name. And this is what we have discussed in our previous sessions that every directory entry contains the inode number and the name. So once we do read DIR, it returns a structure containing the first entry. Then we again call read DIR, it returns the second structure containing the second entry and this process goes on. And remember, uh, once uh, the read DIR reaches the end of the directory, it returns null. Moreover, in case of error as well, read DIR returns null. So this is a code snippet that we have discussed in the previous session as well, which is used to manage the error and the end of file, end of directory. We set the error number global variable to zero. And if the entry, if the entry that is the read DIR has returned null and the error number is not zero, that means we need to handle the error over here. Okay. And these are some basic functions, chdir to change the directory, rewind is to rewind the directory, tell dir and seek dir are, are functions that are used to change the current location associated with this uh, directory stream. Okay, let me move on to the terminal and see an example to understand these calls. Do see the man pages of these function open dir and read dir and others as well. To save time I have uh, written a basic program that will make you understand these functions. Okay. Uh, fine. Uh, what I am doing is I am calling open dir on on this path that is the home directory. 
then I'm calling chdir to change to home directory. And then I'm calling read dir and I'm passing, I'm passing read dir this directory stream pointer. And read dir returns a, a, a structure of darent type. And this structure, which is named as entry over here, it contains uh, the inode number as well as the name of the files and the subdirectories inside that directory. And this is just the error handling that I have discussed before as well. So I enter in a loop and I read DIR and I print the D name member of the entry. Then I again read DIR and then I print and then I do it again. And this process goes on until the read DIR reaches the end of the directory. And in that case, it returns null and the error number of course contains zero and we print end of directory. And after I come out to from this loop, I just call the close DIR function to close the directory stream. I hope uh, the code is simple. Uh, let me quit, compile my read DIR and let me run it. Fine. So it displays the contents of uh, home directory. Let me use ls and You can note a point that uh, the sequence of these files is different from the sequence of these files. Let me do this. Now you can see if I pass hyphen f option to ls, it will display the files and directories in the same sequence as they are appearing in inside the directory as 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 they appear. And over here, uh, over here, uh, you you see they 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 come in sorted order. And if I use hyphen F option, uh, the order is such uh, in which the file system actually adds these entry to the to the directory. And it also, of course, depends on how how the file system fills the gap in the directory after after files are removed from there. OK, so let's move back. Okay, students, now we know how to read the contents of a directory. Uh, let us now move on to designing our own, own LS uh, utility. And let's first see what LS do. Well, the default behavior of LS without any arguments or option is to list the contents of present working directory after sorting them in alphabetic order and then displaying them on STD out in columns, list down and then across. How much columns and rows depend on the maximum number of file names that can be managed in a single row. And these are all the, all the options that you can pass to LS. Let me move on to the terminal. Clear screen. Let me do LS. And you see, uh, when we run LS without any command line argument, it lists the contents of the present working directory. And it displays them in columns. And the columns are sorted A, C, D, D, F, 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 G, L, L, M. So they are, they, are, they are in sorted order from top to bottom and then across. And how much columns and rows depends on the maximum number of file names that can be managed in a single row. If I reduce the size and then I call LS, you see the number of rows and columns are different. And if I increase it and then I call LS, you see they are of course different. So the behavior of ls dynamically change. Of course, we can always pass uh, arguments to uh, ls. I'm passing it two directory names and it is displaying the contents of those two directories. I can pass hyphen i option to ls and it will display the i node numbers as well. And I can always pass the a option and it will show the hidden files as well. So every directory has two links a dot and a double dot, dot represents the present working directory and double dot the parent of this directory. And I can use a hyphen capital R option that is used to recursively go through the directories and display them. So D2 contains two files and two directories and then inside the programming directory we have this and inside the subject directory we have this. Great. And let me use a famous uh, hyphen L option which shows you the long listing. 
okay so in this long listing uh, the first thing you see uh, is uh, the the total uh, over here this total 60 uh, well this shows the total number of blocks taken up by files and directories inside inside this d1 directory uh, however it doesn't include the contents of subdirectories let me confirm this by putting an s over here show the block sizes as well okay so these are the block sizes of each file and directory if you uh, sum up this column it will sum up to 60 so this is what i'm saying fine let me let me clear screen and let me run it again okay so now there are seven columns total of seven columns this is the first column which represents the file type and the permissions uh, well uh, this file type uh, only this portion you can see this dash represents the file type dash represents that it is a regular file p shows that it, it is a named pipe or fifo b shows that this is a character uh, this is block special file c shows that this is a character special file l shows that this is a softlink l and this s shows that this is a socket file and this d is for directory so we have seven different types of files well this file type is set when a file is actually created for example you can use mkdir command or mkdir library call to create a directory you can use the mk54 command or mk54 library call to create a name pipe you can use the mk node command or mk node system call to create a character or block special file and so on and the point to be noted as uh, is that the, the file type cannot be changed after you you have created a file after this first character uh, these nine characters actually represents the permissions on this file they are grouped into three 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 portions these three are for read write execute permission for the owner and read dash dash um, these three are the permission for the group members and these three are the permission for others okay so uh, you all uh, must be knowing that uh, these permissions are set by by the mod argument of the program that is creating it uh, with the not of you mask in case of regular file and in case of directory it is mod and not of you mask and triple seven uh, a bit of uh, different permission sets over here for in case of softlink actually uh, uh, every softlink will have these permission because the actual permissions are there on on this f2 where is f2 well actual permissions are over here so you will find read write execute read write execute and read write execute in case of a soft link fine what else okay mm -hmm. yes we have three special bits one is known as the suid bit which is shown in the execute portion of the owner that is other is the sgi bit sgid bit which is shown as as s in the execute portion of the group and the uh, other other is this t s uh, sticky bit which is shown as a t in the execute part of of others uh, if you are not very clear about these permissions please go through my operating system video lecture in which i have talked in detail about uh, these permissions anyway after you have created a file you cannot change its type however you can change the permissions using using the ch mode command or ch mode system call fine well uh, this second column uh, over here shows shows the link count uh, dear students when you create a file its link count is normally one however in case of directory it is two plus n we have our directory over here its size is two plus n uh, where n is the number of sub directories in that directory since there is a a directory in this subdirectory so it has a link count of 3 2 plus n okay mm, so uh, after creation uh, you can always increase the link count by by using the ln command or by the link system call over here you can see uh, this this file file1.txt is having a link count of 2 and this holding to file1 is also having a link count of 2 so any file which is having a link count of greater than 1 if you remove that file uh, its link count is decremented and the file is actually deleted only when the link count becomes zero fine i am quickly reviewing these things because i have talked in detail about these things in my my operating system sessions 
well the third column is uh, the user column and the fourth is the group and uh, whenever uh, any file type is created its user and group values are set equal to the user and primary group values of the person who executed that 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 program and after creation you can always change the owner as well as the group of the file by the ch own uh, command or ch own system call finally over here we have we have the size and the uh, size changes as you add and delete contents in a file or you add entries in in a directory uh, well size of a named pipe uh, is zero over here it always is zero we will discuss about this in in some future session in detail and the size in case of a, a character special file and a block special file over here you do not see the size actually these are the major number and the minor number of the driver programs uh, corresponding to this device we will talk about these as well in our future session and finally over here we have the date and time well dear students when uh, uh, we create a file the creator program set all the three time stamps that is uh, the access time modification time and status change time to the current time and later on whenever you you just access the file uh, using the cat or the less program uh, the access time changes and whenever you you run a command like ch own or ch mode which actually change the contents of the i node of the file the c time change or the status time change and finally when you edit the file contents for example using vim both the modification time and status change time change and uh, most of you might have used the touch command when you touch a file all the three timestamps change and over here uh, by default whenever you do ls hyphen l uh, it displays the modification time and there are options using which you can see the the c time and the a times finally this is the seventh column name of a file uh, this is at the end which is set by the creator program of course and you can change it as well uh, by the mv command on the shell or using the rename library call okay so now we have a fair idea what uh, does ls do let us move back on the slides uh, please try all these options when you have time how does ls do it so instead of straight away jumping on to writing our own ls program that do the long listing let us first start with a very basic version and the algorithm for for this basic version of ls is uh, open the directory read uh, entry till end of directory display entry contents and if we have not reached the end of the directory go to step two again repeat this process and finally close the directory okay so let us write the first version and which receives exactly one directory name via command line argument and display names of files and subdirectories in the order as they appear in in the directory mm -hmm. so let's move on to the terminal again and uh, once again to save time i have already written a basic version of this which will not be difficult for you to understand okay so here it is so we have uh, the main function which uh, is receiving exactly one argument and that should be a directory name i am assuming and then it is uh, calling uh, the do ls function with that argument name and this is the do ls function which receives the uh, full path of that directory and it opens the directory read its contents display them on std out and close this is the same piece of code which we have seen before we are opening the directory receiving it in our directory stream pointer and we are passing then this directory stream pointer to read dir and we are calling this read dir in a while loop until we reach is null this is the error handling part and this is the actual line which is which is printing remember d underscore name is the member of the direct structure which contains the name and it will uh, repeat this loop and finally it will close the dir and fall back to the main function hope it will work we do gcc lsv 0.c and we run it okay we need to pass it an argument let's suppose i pass it the argument 
D2 and you see it uh, displays the contents and if I pass it let's suppose another directory name D3 as well it doesn't work uh, so this version uh, works fine if we pass it exactly one directory name and if we do not pass any directory name I assume it should display the contents of the present working directory and if we pass it multiple directory names it should work accordingly so let us write our next version uh, a version uh, in which the ls program should display the contents of present working directory if uh, executed without any command line arguments and uh, it should also work fine if we pass space separated uh, directory names to it let me let me make these minor changes to our program lsv0.c let me copy it to lsv1.c and let me name lsv1.c so this is lsv1 and what it is going to do is it is going to receive multiple directory names or none in both these cases it should work okay fine so, so in case if it is receiving just the command name that is no command line arguments are passed in that case what it should do it should just call do ls with uh, with uh, with this present working directory fine and in case of of um, if some command line arguments are passed one or more it should it should repeatedly call a do ls for as much directories it is passed so let me write down a loop over here in the else part uh, let me say int i is equal to zero while plus plus i is less than arg c Okay, so let me take this line up. Directory listing of arg v sub i, and I should call the do ls program with arg v sub i. Fine. So I think this loop ends here, and the else ends here. And the main ends here and that is it i don't think anything else is required this 2ls function will work pretty fine with the new version let me do gcc ls v1.c fine and let me call it without any argument it is displaying the present working directory okay and let me pass it with t2 and d3 as well so it is displaying both it works with no command line arguments display the contents of present working directory and works with multiple directory names as well however there is still a wrinkle and the wrinkle is it is displaying the the hidden files as well and 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 this wrinkle needs to be ironed that is i don't want that the hidden file should be displayed now the question is how to suppress the hidden files uh, and we all know that in in all unices a hidden file is a file whose name starts with a dot or, or a period let us add this feature as well to this version of our program let me do cplsv1.c to lsv2.c and let me do lsv2.c lsv 2.c and this version of course will handle the uh, hidden file issue and I don't want that the hidden files should be displayed okay so I need to go to the do ls function and in the do ls function uh, over here I am 
displaying the file name. So I need to check out if it starts with a dot, uh, I should not display it. So it's simple. Okay, let me put uh, uh, a check over here. If entry d underscore name and the first character of this is equal to I uh, suppose uh, dot then what should I do is I should continue the loop I should I should move up over here in in the loop I should not print this line and otherwise of course I should print fine I think this should work I'm closing the else part well I'm closing the while closing the directory and this is that so I think it's I hope I have not made any typo over here gcc lsv 2c works fine d2 and d3 yes now you see the hidden files are also not there that is great a basic version of ls is working fine let's move back to the slides okay this version is also working now and this is also okay and now we uh, we want to add a feature that will display every file in the directory in long listing so this is the part which is really interesting let's move ahead okay what does ls hyphen l do we have seen it on on the terminal but uh, just to brush up it it displays seven different fields the file type and permissions in the first 10 characters the first character is the file type and then the nine characters are the permission then we have the link count the user the group size time and then the name of the file and well dear students these attributes of file are not stored in direct structure in the direct structure we just have the inode number and the name and the remaining six fields are not there in the direct structure so we have the stat system call. Well, the stat and lstat functions can be used to access the file attributes stored in its inode. To stat a file, no permissions are required on the file itself. However, execute permissions are required on all of the directories in the path name that leads to the file. Well, the stat call actually is passed the file name and it populates a stat structure containing all the information about about this file and we have the lstat as well it, it is similar to stat except that if the path if if this path is a symbolic link then the link itself is stated not the file it refers to okay so some important members of the stat structure that are of our interest right now are these the inode number the mod which will contain the file type and and the permissions the number of links, UAD, GAD, size, all the three times. And of course, we have the name. Well, uh, uh, this stat structure is defined in a file stat.h. And there are other fields of, of that as well. Let me, let me move on to the slides and, and do a clear screen, do man l stat. Okay fine if we can go down we can see this structure over here yes this is a structure it is just moved up struct strat you can see and if you want to uh, dig out more information and you 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 can find out the stat.h file as well let me find that from usr include let me find by name a file stat.h and let me put all the errors in div null okay so let me less there are multiple files with the name of stat.h let me less usr include asm generic stat.h okay fine well this file contains the stat structure the members of the stat structures you can see there are a lot of fields in it and the members of the stat 64 structure as well you can see all the fields of this structure uh, 
uh, they are not of our interest and the ones we are interested in I have mentioned that on onto onto the slide as well anyway okay so just uh, see a program which uses this stat call to get the information about a file see this piece of code that demonstrate the use of the stat system call fine uh, the main function receives the uh, uh, file name via command line argument and that file name is passed to this function show stat info and this is the function in which the actual thing is working we are calling lstat so we are calling lstat two arguments the file name and a stat structure and on success this lstat will populate this this structure with all the fields which we have discussed so far and if this is a success we will display these fields we will display the mode the link count the user uh, which is there in the stuid member stgid will contains the group id st size will contain the size and we have stm time c time and a time as well we are showing the m time and finally the file name is is being passed as a command line argument hope this code is simple that can compile this program <coughs> Excuse me. Let me compile it with the name of file info. Okay, let me call file info. I need to pass it. Let me pass it file info.c. Fine. Oh, great. So over here you can see all uh, the members that are being displayed over here. Mm, and if I do something stat as well on this file info.c okay so stat is also a command that gets the statistics of a file I, I've just run it so that I can compare these two the, the command I have written and the command that is uh, there on the shell well uh, this is the file name pretty fine this is the mod time and uh, uh, this is a bit Greek to us right now because we are used to of seeing the time in a uh, form of string This is a size uh, This is the group ID. This is the user ID, but we are used to of seeing the username and and the group name This is a link count and this is a mode Okay So uh, let me let me talk about these two first the user ID and the group ID. Well, just since you all must be knowing that the UIDs and names are there in 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 a system file that is at C past WD. Let me do grep one thousand from the file at C past WD, and you you see I I got a record over here. Well, you can see there are seven fields in this in this file. And the first field is the username then we have the password and this X shows that the password is there in that C shadow file and this is the UID and this is the GID and this is the G course field personal information about the user this is the home directory and this is the shell and we want that uh, we should not get this thousand we should get this username similarly uh, you all must be knowing that this uh, group ID uh, and the group name uh, are there in a file that is at C group okay so you see uh, the group ID is 1001 and the group name is Arif and this is the at C group file which contains four fields the first field is the group name then is the password and this X shows that the password is there in at C G shadow file uh, this is a G ID and and uh, after this column there may be there may be multiple secondary groups if they exist also uh, let me run uh, file info again what I want is I want to convert this user ID to username and this group ID to group name so one way to get the username uh, from UID is to open the password file search for thousand and get the corresponding username from there and the other way is on the slides that is you use get pw uid function 
Well, get PW UID function uh, is passed the UID and it returns a pointer to a structure containing the broken out fields of the record in the password database, which we have just seen. And uh, these are some of the members which are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the seven fields. So once I will pass 1000 over here, I will get a password structure which will contain these seven members and I can easily get the name from here. Fine. Similarly, I have the get grgid which is passed the group ID and it returns a structure of type group and this contains all the all the four fields of, of, of this file at C group corresponding to this GID. Hope it is it is simple. Do see the main pages and do see the corresponding header files as well. Okay, uh, let me show you some uh, basic programs uh, that show you how to use these uh, to convert these user IDs and group IDs to username and group name. Let's move up here. Clear screen. UID to uname.c. This is a basic program that let's show you the concept. Okay. Uh, so uh, this program receives a UID uh, via command line argument and then pass that UID to the get PW UID function over here which returns the past WD structure and note the error handling again. The get PW UID returns null if the corresponding record is not found as well as in case of error. So finally, if there is no error, we just print this line. And we know that uh, this PW underscore name field of the, the password structure contains the name of the, the user whose UID has been passed to this function. Let me do gcc uid to uname.c and let me do dot forward slash a dot out 1000 and you see the name of the user is rf. Uh, and in the same fashion, you, you can see the gid to sorry, gid to gname.c uh, exactly on the same pattern. You receive the command line argument as as a group ID, you pass that group ID to get grgid function, which returns the struct group, and we display the group name. Let me do gcc gid to gname.c. Let me pass it 1001, and of course, that is again rf. Let me pass it 0, which we all know that is uh, the, the root. So far, so good. Clear screen again, and let me run file info on file info.c. So we have successfully converted this ID to the username and this group ID to the group name, and the size is working pretty fine over here. So next thing I want to handle is is this time modification time. Well, most of you might be knowing that all Unix-based machines represent time internally as as number of seconds passed since Unix epoch, which is midnight 1st January 1970. Well, Linux kernel saved these seconds in a 32-bit signed variable, and, and let me let me show you this to you. Date plus percentage s to display the number of seconds. Uh, dear students, I have taken a complete video session on the time management in my operating system lecture series, where I have discussed. In detail about the the hardware and the system clock or the kernel clock or the software clock or the CMOS clock well the different uh, time zones uh, the world is divided into I have discussed about the time zones as well and I have also talked about different locales that cater for internationalization of pro programs but for the time being uh, we are just interested to convert these seconds to this state or these seconds to uh, uh, an appropriate date time stream. Let me let me do man hyphen k time. Well, this will display a brief list of all the main pages containing the string time. So please go through this, check out which is of your interest. And to save time, I have seen that this time is of our interest get time in seconds system call two okay clear screen man two time 
Okay, it says that it returns the time in seconds since Unix Epoch. Uh, but actually, we already have the number of seconds and we want to convert those number of seconds to date time actually. So let me move down. And if I move down, I have also certain other related functions. And this C time is of our interest. Let me do man C time. Okay, so this is C time. Well, this function is uh, will solve our problem. This is a library function that is passed the number of seconds since Unix epoch and it returns a null terminated uh, date time string, which we will use in, in our LS program. Okay, so once again to save time, I have written a sample program that describes the usage of, of these two functions. Transform time dot C. Okay, so, okay. So it receives the number of seconds uh, via command line argument, converts them to integer and stores them in this. So whatever uh, number you pass to this program is passed to this C time function. And this C time function actually uh, converts these number of seconds to appropriate date time string. Fine, simple. Let me do GCC. Transform time dot c dot forward slash a dot out. Let me give it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. So since Unix epoch, if this much number of seconds are passed, then the date is February 14, 4, 31, 30, 2009. Okay. Let me do date plus percentage s, which will display the number of seconds passed since Unix epoch right now and this is the actual date and now let me let me call our program with with this much number of seconds and let's see the time well the time is february 21 february 21 15 15 48 15 15 48 2018 that is great Okay, so let me run file info again on file info.c. Oh, well, dear students, now we have solved this time issue as well. We can we can change this number of seconds to, to appropriate date time string. And the link count is no problem. Well, the last thing which is left is this mod. Uh, well, uh, this mod is actually going to tell us about the file type and permissions. So let us move on to the slides and, and try to dig out more details about the file type and, and okay, we are done with this. We are done with the time. You can see there are other functions related to time and time zones. Okay, so let's talk about the file type and permissions. Well, dear students, uh, this ST mode member of uh, STAT is actually a 16-bit uh, structure, uh, which is divided uh, into these portions like this. The lower three bits contains permission for, for others. Oops. So over here it means it has no permissions for, for others, neither for read nor for write nor for execute. These three bits represents the permission for the group and this shows that for the group members uh, we have read permissions only. These three permissions tell you about the permissions for the owner or the user and these bits right now shows that the owner has read and write permission on, on, the, on this file. And these are the special permissions, SUID bit, SGID bit, and the sticky bit, all are not set. And this is the file type. Uh, well, uh, we have four bits for the file types. That means we can cater for a total of 16 different file types. Uh, but uh, till date, Unix supports only seven file types and their binary codes are shown over here. They're octal and these are the file types name pipe, character special file, directory, block special file, a regular file, named pipe or FIFO, and this is a socket. 
remember the regular file has a binary uh, 100 so we have 100 over here this means that uh, this st mode member of stat tells you that this is a regular file pretty fine so now uh, how to write a program that will read this structure and determine the file type Oh, well, uh, dear students, you can determine the file type by creating a mask, by making all the bits zero other than the one of, of, of your interest. Uh, if, fine. If, if uh, you need to have a bit of knowledge about bitwise operators, dear students, if, if you are new to bitwise operators, please, please watch my C refresher video lecture number five. And for the time being, just remember, unlike uh, the logical operators, uh, the bitwise operators operates on bits of their operands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask. This is a mask and inside the mask I have kept all the bits zero and I have just keep all these four bits one. And if I keep all these four bits one, it means one, 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 and this becomes seven and this becomes one. Okay, so we have one, seven over here. And these 3, 3, 3, 3, 12, total 12 bits in octal, if I write them, it will be uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is a mask for, for, for this mod structure of 16 bits. And this mask will be ended, bitwise ended with the ST mode. And if it comes out to be this, 0, 1, tetra, 0. 0 1 tetra 0 so that means this is a named pipe and if it becomes to be this 0 2 so this means this is a character special file and this process goes on so remember this bitwise and is important let me let me move on to to the program that will describe it in a bit better way file type dot c okay fine so what i'm doing is i'm uh, i'm receiving uh, the file name as command line argument and i'm calling lstat to it and this buff is actually the uh, stat structure so this will be populated and right now the member uh, of the stat structure i'm interested in is st underscore mode so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this over here uh, the mask we are using first of all is having the most significant four bits one the most significant four bits are one and we are bitwise ending this mask with the st mode field and we are comparing this result with the code of the seven field type seven file types for name pipe, we are comparing it with this. For for special file, character special, we are comparing it for this. For for directory for with this, for block special with this, and for regular file with this, and so on. And wherever we get a match, we, we display that proper string, displaying the appropriate file type. Let me compile this file type.c. And let me run it on sorry file type dot c so this is a regular file let me run it on d1 which says it's the directory let me run it on a file that is the name pipe so it says it's the name pipe let me run it on socket file it says it's a socket and let me run it on the my blk file which is the block special file and you see these are the files which i have uh, used above great uh, so we can now determine the file type and the last test is to determine the file file permissions so once again let's move to the slides we are done with this Okay, fine. Now we we need to determine the file permissions, and the file permissions are are over here. 
well you can determine the file permission by creating a mask and uh, by making all the bits zero other than the one of your interest uh, so uh, this mask shows that 004 this is this is in octal of course 0 0 and 4 that means this bit is 1 and I'm going to check whether the owner has read permissions on this or not so after ending these two if I get this that means owner has read permissions consider this mask sorry consider this mask it says 0 0 2 remember this is in octal so 0 0 2 2 means only this bit is 1 that is I want to check out whether the owner has uh, write permissions or not so I'm going to uh, bitwise end this with the SC mode and if I get this that means the owner has write permissions similarly over here I have uh, 001 001 and 1 over here means only this bit is 1 that means I am interested in the execute permission of the owner and I bitwise and this mask with this mode and if I get this that means owner has execute permissions so uh, uh, the way I have checked for users you can check for group you can check for others and you can check for uh, these permissions as well pretty fine let me move on to the terminal again and check for file permissions clear screen uh, let me use vim file permissions dot c fine okay so what I'm going to do is I'm I'm receiving the the file name via command line argument over here and I'm else setting that so that I can get the strat structure and uh, I am putting the st underscore mode member of this stat structure in uh, integer variable and here are the if else parts I'm creating a string and then I'm checking out if the mode and this mask equals this that means the owner has read permission and over here we have the owner has write permission and the owner has execute permission remember uh, this portion represents uh, the permission for the owner while this portion represents the permission for the group and while this portion represents the permission for for others and finally we have the special permissions this portion if this bit is one that means uh, we have uh, the suid bit one that means we place an s at str sub two that means we place an s over here and an s at the execute part on for the group permission and a t at the execute part of other permission so i hope this makes sense to you all let me exit vcc file permissions dot c dot form slash a dot out and let me run on and do i have to pass it some argument yes i have to pass it an argument let me pass it file permissions so these are the permissions on this file let me confirm this well yes the owner has read write permission owner has read write permission group has only read group has only read and these are the others remember uh, this is the file type which is not being covered in this program right now and if i do let's post dot form slash a dot out on the one slash my x z one you see if I do an ls with this and you see uh, this is a program which has its SUID bit set you can see the S over here and once we run our program on this file we get an S over here so that means it's working great so SUID bit of, of this program is set similarly the other bits will also be displayed fine okay uh, dear students I hope uh, you will be able to add this feature as well in the version 3 which will display the long listing and uh, after that you can add another feature which will list the uh, list the file names in columns down and then across and the number of columns depends on the length of the names and the total number of names that come in a single line okay 
and you will be able to uh, sort the output as well using you you can use qsort for this okay and you can always add uh, some colors in your ls program so that the directories should be displayed in blue executables in green tarballs in red soft links in pink and whatever okay so you can always add a hyphen capital r option as well uh, so that uh, uh, it can recursively show the contents of the subdirectories as well. Uh, let me, let me. Uh, I think I have created a final program with the name of my final ls. Let me run it with on on the d1 directory. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the final version which I have prepared, and you can see it is displaying all the files uh, in the long listing. And let me run ls hyphen l as well. Oops, clear screen. Let me shrink it a bit. Let me do ls hyphen l or d1 directory and let me do dot forward slash dot forward slash my final ls on, on, on d1. Okay, so you see the same. Uh, the colors are, of course, not there, but you can see this subdirectory having all these values which are same over here same over here okay so uh, i don't know whether this last statement uh, over here holds true for you or not but for me let me tell you teaching is no doubt fun let us fall back i'm sure uh, you will be able to write this final version of ls and at the same time, you should be able to write down your own find as well as as well as a grab utility. Okay, dear students, that is all for today's session. Hope it was informative for you all. I really enjoyed it myself. Uh, see you next time. Happy coding and Allah Hafiz.